Pulmonics, breathing innovation into life. For patients with severe emphysema, Pulmonics offers the Zephyr endobronchial valve, a minimally invasive treatment option with over a decade of proven clinical experience. To identify which patients will respond to the Zephyr valve, the Pulmonics Chartist system provides precise pulmonary flow and pressure readings, allowing physicians to assess the patient's collateral ventilation. By identifying diseased lobes with no collateral airflow, physicians can optimize the valve placement for endoscopic lung volume reduction. Targeting the diseased lobes with no collateral airflow, the Zephyr endobronchial valve is the first choice in treatment for patients with severe emphysema. This simple implant procedure uses a standard bronchoscope and flexible delivery catheter to guide the Zephyr valve into the target lobe and desired airway. Once deployed, the self-expanding valve conforms to the bronchial wall and creates an airtight seal. The Zephyr's one-way valve prevents airflow into the diseased portion of the lung while allowing trapped air and fluid to escape. During treatment, several Zephyr valves may be placed in the diseased lobe. The valve can be easily removed, if necessary. By controlling airflow, the Zephyr valve reduces the volume of the diseased lobe, allowing the healthy lobes to expand and function more efficiently. Additionally, the diaphragm returns to its natural shape, improving breathing mechanics. The pulmonic solution is the cornerstone therapy in interventional pulmonology. It provides significant improvement in lung function, exercise tolerance, and quality of life. Pulmonics, breathing innovation into life. Day-to-day -day living is, is just a, a, a depressing thing simply because you're not able to do what you used to do when you were younger. I got diagnosed with this condition 32 years ago and I actually gave up smoking 30 years ago. And I, I know that physically my body is getting older so it can't tolerate what it used to and getting starved of the adequate supply of oxygen doesn't help a lot, you know. So the prognosis going forward if you don't do anything is not good. One looks at the options of transplants and that sounds all great. And if a donor came along with a good heart and lung, which I would need, because they tend to do both, why do you give it to a 68 year old anyway? Of course your family tolerates you, but it's not a nice feeling to know that you've been tolerated. Everybody's worried, oh, you know, Dad can't do this, or, you know, and I want to be able to walk around my garden at home with my wife without having to go in a caddy cart or something like that. Uh, from, a, from a mental point of view, I'm quite prepared for, for, for what's going on. Um, and I'm quite happy to judge it afterwards to say, wow, it's been good, or else if it hasn't, okay, what have we lost? We haven't lost anything. Um, yeah, no, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm apprehensive. Of course I am, um, but I'm excited. Yeah. Exactly a month ago I had the operation. Um, as it turned out, four valves went in and have effectively done the job. I'm using the bottom part of my lungs, which I don't think I was using before. The top part of my lung, my, the top right lobe, which has been neutralized, 
with the valves, um, I believe has reduced in size and taken the pressure off the bottom part of my lungs. And in my learning to breathe by collapsing my shoulders and breathing from my stomach, it's got this part of my lungs going again and given them the room to function. There's less shortness of breath when he talks, less stopping between words and sentences. I went to the top of the house yesterday. Went to, yeah, one of, one of the things on our bucket list, we each made a bucket list, was... First day in ICU, we made a bucket list. Dad had to, Dad had to get upstairs to see... <laughs> <laughs> I said to Dad, right, on my list, you've got to get upstairs to see... Whose room? Charlie, Charlie's. Charlie's bedroom, yeah. Dad made it up there. Yesterday. 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 Without even stopping. Straight up. In fact, you and I were going, Dad, slow down, you know. <laughs> and they couldn't keep up. My bedroom was right above here. And there are 12 steps. Quite steep steps. And I looked at that on the first night. And Jason, my son, put his shoulder under my bum. I took one step and he carried me the other 11. That's the way I got to this bedroom. Now... I walk up, not, I don't sleep in that bedroom, I sleep in another one, which is another eight steps away, and I take all of them quite happily. But the biggest thing is food. And, because Dad, you've always loved your food. Definitely over the last couple of years, food had you know, come back to kind of tiny portions, because as you said, One mouth for one breath. If you ate too much, <laughs> there was no space to breathe, and as a result, you lost a lot of weight. The more I ate, the less I breathed. Because if I filled my stomach up, I was putting so much pressure on my lungs that in point of fact, my lungs couldn't bring in the air because of the pressure of my stomach. That's, uh, that's uh, rather envious. <laughs> I'm going to withdraw from, from my <laughs> fairly active business life. I'm going to enjoy my family. Am I breathing in better? Yes, I do. I think I take in more air. So maybe I get 10% from that, and maybe I've got an extra 30% of good lung working in my favor. So, I think the prognosis going forward is very good, <laughs> very good. I ran three days a week and went to the gym three days a week. I felt wonderful. You know, you feel better when you exercise. I wanted to pass that on to my kids as well. We were always doing things like going to the park or going on a walk around the marina. We actually lived across the street from the marina and I walked while she rode her bike. And of course, when I got sick, there was no way that I could make it completely around the marina. I had bronchitis, and then once I got rid of the bronchitis, then I had pneumonia. Once I got rid of one, then it would be a matter of maybe a week, it seemed like I was sick again. When you have emphysema or COPD, you have pockets in your lungs that trap air inside, and then you can't get rid of that air. Sometimes just to walk to the car, she'd be out of breath. That was when she was at her worst. She lost a lot of weight. Her arms were so bony, and it was you could see her ribs. The doctor had said, basically, you should get used to the idea of going to hospice. I said, absolutely not. I have a nine-year-old. She's dependent upon me, so no. I just wasn't ready to accept that and started looking for a second opinion. And they came up with a new clinical trial in regards to the Zephyr valves that were less invasive, and that sounded absolutely wonderful to me. There's no cutting, there's no stitches. They insert these valves and collapses the bad areas of your lungs to help you breathe better. And I got the Zephyr valves and I felt 100% better. There's very little recovery time. I could feel the difference. It was like, oh my gosh. You know, I feel like I can breathe again. I don't have to fight for that breath. 
we went on vacation to Florida and it was wonderful. And we were able to do things like go on walks along the beach. She could never do that before. I went and played in the ocean. I felt like the old me. Prior to becoming ill, we went to the water park every Saturday all summer long. And that's going up the slides, going down the slides. And then we stopped going when she got sick. This summer was the first time we went back. And we went quite a few times and she could go up those stairs and it's like four stories high in some of these slides. And now she was really loving it again. Your stamina and your ability just for everyday life, you just take it for granted. And without the valves, I don't think I would be here today. They're absolutely wonderful. I fell in love with the trumpet because of the sound. But you always get the melody. Well, what more fun can it be? I've been in backup bands behind The Temptations, Peaches and Herb, Jackie Wilson. His passion, his self, shows when he's playing. That was definitely falling in love because he just becomes himself and, and just glows. I really realized I was having difficulties when my grandson was two years old and he said, can you pick me up and carry me? And I picked him up and I couldn't carry him. So it was shortly after that I got in touch with my doctor and they said, yes, you have severe emphysema. Emphysema is a disease where deep inside your lungs the air gets in there and you, you can't get it back out again. But it's a progressive disease, so as time went by, you're fatigued all the time. And for me personally, it got to the point where playing the trumpet was too much work. I was playing a three-hour job, and halfway through a song in the middle of the second set, I had to get off stage and go sit down. I just could not catch my breath. Not being able to breathe can be full-on panic. It's like drowning. It made me feel terrible. But I was also letting down my bandmates. So he was actually let go from a band because they felt that he physically wasn't up to it anymore. You know, and that fear that, am I really not going to be able to play and what am I gonna do with my life if I can't play my trumpet? I would stay home a lot because it was hard work to, to get out of my house to go to my car. When you realize that you can't do anything, you start to feel useless. And when depression sets in, well then you just didn't do anything but watch TV. Sometimes I want two days off from breathing because breathing was so much work. Browsing through Facebook one day, I saw a post looking for individuals for a clinical research study. And it is a minimally invasive lung reduction process that to me looked like the answer to my problem. So I called them up. After the installation of the valves, I felt better, seriously. And so I was all excited when they came to get me and they said, he's saying he can already breathe better. In a word, it made me feel alive. Everything about my life is improved. My ability to get up and move around. My ability to want to do things. I mean, I'm in love with life again. 30 days later, he played a weekend of gigs. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three hour gigs and was fine. It turned our relationship around. We got fun back in there. The word I want to use is liberating. It allowed me to uh, do the things that I love to do, which is play music. Mm -hmm.